are watching Field Sports Channel News. Basque has issued a plea to its members to take part in a consultation on the use of lead in ammunition. The new Consultation Health and Safety Executive lasts until the 10th of December 2023. It proposes changes to the way ammunition is made, sold and used. Following a consultation last year, the government has withdrawn plans to stop the phase out of lead in air gun pellets. The government still wants to reduce or remove lead and plastic in other areas of shooting. Here at Basque, we're encouraging everybody to get involved where they can and supply further evidence. The consultation closes on the 10th of December, so please get involved and head over to the Basque website for further information. Aim to Sustain will now run Game Assurance in the UK. The Aim to Sustain umbrella group for organisations with an interest in UK game shooting is to take over British Game Assurance's Game Assurance Scheme. Meanwhile, the BGA will rebrand as a game meat marketing body called Eat Wild. It will work alongside Basque's Eat Game marketing body. The Countryside Alliance's Game to Eat marketing body still has a presence on social media, but is not active. Norway's fish farmers have been told to shoot bluefin tuna that invade seaborne salmon pens. The rise in bluefin numbers is causing issues for Scandinavian salmon farmers. The fish invade pens where salmon are grown for the table. The government has issued guidance on how to deal with the tuna, which can weigh in excess of 300 kilos. It says the directorate recommends that euthanasia be carried out with firearms. Shots must be aimed at the fish's brain so it loses consciousness immediately. Scottish farmers have written to the government to ask for help in protecting their stocks from sea eagles. The birds are thriving since their reintroduction to the Scottish countryside in 1973. They're now causing issues for sheep farmers with an estimated 175 breeding pairs. Some are predating on livestock. The Scottish sheep industry says severe predation of their flocks is increasingly difficult to manage and control. A local council has struck a blow for the countryside by turning its back on veganism. Suffolk Council is expected to vote formally to support local farmers and food producers this week, bucking a trend to force local authorities to eat only plant-based food at their functions. The proposal says the council will ensure it always provides locally sourced meat and dairy options alongside plant-based options at its catered events. It is the third local authority to adopt countryside-friendly policies in recent months, following the lead of councillors in Cornwall and North Northamptonshire. And we hope that regardless of political party, every councillor gets behind this important motion and says yes to our countryside. Scientists that refuse to undertake basic gamekeeping have found a new scapegoat for their failures with capercaillies. Scientists from Forestry and Land Scotland say that the abundance of voles on land where the capercaillie roam is key to the welfare of the birds. If voles are present in numbers, predators eat them. If not, the rare grouse may become their target. Scientists say they are now surveying 60,000 acres of vole habitat in the Cairngorms to inform their research. Meanwhile, they remain ideologically opposed to controlling those predators, meaning the bird species is heading for extinction. A new coin collection highlights the plight of Britain's endangered creatures. The Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust this week praised the use of fish and animals that are central to their conservation work in the new Royal Coin Collection. The new pound coin features bees, the 50p shows an Atlantic salmon and the 10p coin has a capercaillie. The Atlantic salmon represents the GWCT's research project on the River Frome, which has monitored salmon migration there for the past 40 years. Louisiana's hunters may get back their black bear tickets. The Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries announces it will hold a vote in November to consider whether a limited hunting season for black bears could be reintroduced. It follows extensive work from Safari Club International to prevent bears from being delisted as a licensed hunting quarry. There are around 1,200 of them living in the state. And finally, scientists from the Natural History Museum are laying traps to capture invasive mitten crabs for the first time. There are thought to be millions of the creatures inhabiting Britain's waterways and they're considered to be one of the most serious non-indigenous invaders in the UK. Experts have now put traps in Pode Harbour in Lincolnshire. They've also asked the public to be vigilant and to report sightings so they can monitor the spread of the crabs. 
You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. <laughs>